Being cheap is a special talent that some people just happen to be born with. The question though is can you become rich by being cheap? What's up everybody, I am Jaspreet Singh from the TheMinorityMindset.com where money minds rethink rich. My family is from a state in India called Punjab. And when your family is from India, it is in your blood to know how to be cheap. Most people are scared to use the word cheap, but I'm an expert at it. I grew up being cheap. Ugh, you're nothing but a cheap brown person who makes money telling people how to manage their money on YouTube. Thank you. Now look, I get it. There's a negative connotation around the whole idea of being cheap because many people associate being cheap with not being willing to pay for something that you got value for. That's not what I mean when I say cheap, okay? That's being dumb. I'm an entrepreneur. I cannot stand doing business with those kind of cheap people who do not want to pay for something that they got value for or who want to buy something just to refund it. That's dumb. That's not cheap. When I say cheap, I mean you got $50 in your pocket and instead of going out and spending this money on something that you don't need, Need, you put it back in your pocket because now you want to invest this money or use it for yourself to build your wealth. Growing up, I saw firsthand that there's a lot of people in America who think they need to spend money on things that they don't actually have to spend their money on. When I was younger, one of our car side mirrors broke and it fell off and we took it to the car shop and the car shop said they were going to charge $250 to put the side mirror back on the car. Now $250 to fix a mirror is kind of a lot of money. So what did we do? We took some duct tape and we taped the side mirror back on the car. Then we found a cheap $7 mirror and we glued it on top of the broken mirror. Now you had a working side mirror for $7 instead of $250. When I was in grade school, me and all of my friends took our lunch to school in brown paper bags. But unlike all of my friends, after I was done eating, I didn't throw my brown paper bag away. I packed it up nicely and I took it home that way I could reuse my brown paper bag the next day. There's no doubt that there's value in being cheap because you get to keep more money in your pocket. The real question though is are you going to be able to become rich by being cheap? I'm going to diagram the answer out for you but before I do that I need you to stop being cheap with that thumbs up button below because the way the YouTube algorithm works if you do not hit that thumbs up button then YouTube is much less likely to show you and other people our financial news and education videos. Let me start by defining what cheap means exactly financially. So let's assume for the purposes of this video that cheap means that you are saving 25% of your income. So for every dollar you earn, you are taking 25 cents a quarter and you're putting it aside because you are being cheap and you are going to save some of your income. If you are subscribed to our YouTube channel, you might just call this being financially smart because you are living below your means. But for the majority of Americans, this is being cheap because, well, the majority of Americans make a dollar and then they spend a dollar 20 with the help of credit cards, lines of credit, and other financing options. By the way, if you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, you should do that. So so you are cheap and you save 25% of your income every time you make a dollar and let's assume that you get a job when you are 21 years old and when you're 21 you get a job that's paying let's just say $35,000 a year and I am going to assume now that your job your boss is going to automatically give you a 3% raise every single year to help you match and maybe even beat inflation. So that means when you're 22 you're going to make just over $36,000 and on and on and on and so now now you are going to save 25% of your income every single year because you are cheap. I had to get my calculator for this so I don't do it wrong. So if you save 25% of $35,000, and I'm going to assume that these numbers are after tax to keep it simple, that means when you're 21, you are going to save $8,750. Now, if you continue to do this and you continue to get a 3% raise every single year from the age of 21 until, let's say, 66 or 45 years, by the time you're 66, you're going to be making $132,000 a year. And every single year, Year, you are going to save 25% of your income. After you're 66 and you are retired, you are going to have a bank account with $844,000 in it because you are cheap. $844,000 might make being cheap look a whole lot more attractive, but 
it doesn't show you the whole picture because remember, this is $844,000 you will have in 45 years in the future. It's not $844,000 you will have today in your pocket and a dollar today doesn't have the same value as a dollar tomorrow. I mean, if you think about it, $100 in 1970 had way more buying power than it did today because of something called inflation. That's the same thing here. A dollar today is not gonna have as much power as a dollar will in 45 years because of inflation. Inflation is when the value of your dollars go down and the price of living, the price of things, the price of your shopping, the price of your home, the price of everything keeps going up. That's what inflation is. So to really understand how much this $844,000 will be worth in 45 years, you have to look at something called the present value. That's a financial term. And what that essentially means is how much this future money, this $844,000 in 45 years, will be worth today. So if we look at the future value of this $844,000, it's actually only worth something like $346,000 today, assuming that inflation is 2% a year. So because you are cheap, you save a quarter of every dollar you earn from the age of 21 until the age of 66. And every year you got a 3% raise and no matter how much money you made, you continue to save 25% of your income. When you did that, you saved $844,000 over the course of your working career, which amounts to $346,000 today. Now $346,000 is a lot of money and it's enough to make you look rich, but it's not enough to make you wealthy. And now if you wanna know the difference between being rich and being wealthy, I already made a video where I talked about this in depth and I will link that for you in the description below. And I'll also link it for you up here, that way you can watch the video so I don't have to go over that concept again in this video. Let me show you what I mean by that. So I just cleaned this off and let's assume that right now, you have $346,000 in your bank account. That's the future value of all the money you're gonna save for being cheap. Now, there's two things that you can do with this money. So let's make it option one and option two. So option one. Option one is you got $346,000 in your bank account and you go out and you buy yourself a nice home because you know you wanna look rich. You buy yourself a nice car because you know you gotta drive a nice car and you go on a couple I don't know what, is that a plane? You go, all right, let's assume that's a plane. You go on a couple of nice vacations. So now you look rich, but then in uh, 18 months or 24 months, you are going to be, you know, B-R-O-K-E, broke. Option two is you do something with this money. So option two is now we are going to invest this money. When you invest your money, now you're putting your money to work. That way your money can go out and attract you money without you physically having to go to work to get paid. So now you got $350,000 and you wanna put this money to work. That way you can make some money and you wanna make some passive income because you wanna be able to live off of this money. So either you're gonna put this money into dividend paying stocks. So stocks that pay you cash dividends, cash payments every year for just owning the Right stocks or you're gonna go out and you're gonna buy some real estate because if you own some real estate well tenants are gonna have to pay you to live there if you invest your money let's assume that you can get a good 7% return on your money every single year so for every dollar you invest you're gonna make seven cents in passive income if you do that with three hundred and forty six thousand dollars that means you are going to make twenty four thousand dollars a year now, $24,000 a year in passive income is pretty good, but it's not enough to replace your current income because if you remember, when you were 21, you were making $35,000 a year. So yeah, you're making $24,000 a year in passive income from your investment, but you're not wealthy enough to use this money to stop working and just live off of your investments. So if you go with option one and you spent all this money that you worked so hard saving because you were cheap and now you go and become anti-cheap and you go and blow all your money on nice things, you will end up broke and you have nothing to show for it minus some nice things because now you have no money to live off of because you spent all your money that you saved. Option two is you invest this money but it's not enough for you to live off of because well, you're not making enough money to replace your income from your job. Now you could say, well, you could be even cheaper but you really don't wanna live small for your whole life because I mean, you also wanna be able to enjoy your life. This is where Indian people are wrong about money because a lot of Indian people look at financial freedom as just saving a lot of money by being cheap. 
but the numbers show you that being cheap isn't enough. Even if you took that whole $844,000 that I showed you, if you save 25% of your income every single year, if you took that whole $844,000 and you invested it and you got that same 7% return, you'd make something like $59,000 a year. But remember, when you were 65, 66, you were making over $130,000 a year. So you're still not making enough to replace the income that you had. So now you're 65, 66 years old and you have a big bank account because you were cheap your whole life and you feel good, but now you have to ask yourself, how do you want to live the rest of your life? Do you want to start drawing cash out of your savings account? That way you can live large, but then you're going to be broke really soon. Or do you want to invest this money, but then you have to continue being cheap and even cheaper than before because you're not making enough money to replace the income that you just had from your job. This is why being cheap alone is not the solution to your financial problems. Being cheap is a good first step. You need to know how to live below your means, but you also need to know how to expand your means. That way you can think bigger and earn more money. That way you can live the life you want without just being cheap your whole life. Well, let me actually explain what I mean with the diagram. So here, Let's say you make $35,000 and you live off of 75% of what you make. If you do that, that means you, this is 75%, you are living off of just about $26,000 and you are saving $9,000. So this is 25% of the pie. Now, if you make $350,000 a year because you work on expanding your means, you work to make more money, you work to grow your wealth, now, if you continue to live off of just 75% of your income because you're still cheap and you're living below your means, now you're not living off of $26,000 a year, you are living off of $260,000 a year and you're also saving 25% of your income. And when I say saving here, I'm going to assume that we mean saving and investing your money. So now you're saving 25% of your income, which is not $9,000. Now it is $90,000. It's a lot easier to live off of $260,000 than it is to live off of $26,000. But guess what? You're still being cheap. I mean, actually, if you lived off of just $200,000, you're being even cheaper here than you are here because now you're living below 75% of your income. So when you focus on expanding your means, it becomes even easier to be cheap because now you have a bigger pot that you can play with. Not to mention the fact that when you're here, you can drive a nicer car, you can own a nicer home, you can wear nicer clothes, you can go on better vacations while still being cheap than you can here even though you're still the same level of cheap. The issue is too many people put all of their emphasis right here. How can you make this part of the pie bigger? Instead of saving 25%, how can you save 30% or 35% instead of trying to figure out how can you actually grow the pie? Because if you can grow the pie, you can live off of the same size chunk but live a much bigger life. The whole point of being cheap and living below your means should not just be to save all of your cash. I mean, you do need to save some cash so you protect yourself from emergencies, but the real reason why you need to be living below your means is so you can grow the pie bigger. This could mean investing your money more aggressively. That way you can get more passive income. That way you can build your wealth. This could mean investing your money into other businesses that you know is a little bit riskier, but you can get a better return. That way you can make more money. Or this could mean investing your money in yourself. Maybe it's a side hustle. Maybe it's your own business. That way you can create more income. That way you can have a bigger pie. That way now when you're cheap, we're talking much bigger numbers so you don't actually feel like you're being cheap. It's all a balance and you need to understand why you're living below your means. It is very important to live below your means, but you need to know why, okay? You are living below your means, that way you have savings to protect you, and so you can use your cash to expand your means, because now the goal isn't just to live smaller, the goal is to live bigger, by living smaller to use your money strategically. That way you can live bigger and expand your means. If you enjoyed this video, here's a video that I think you'll love. And while you're at it, subscribe to our YouTube channel and join our free finance and business newsletter. And as always, keep hustling. Tesla. Okay, so if I open up Tesla, you can see that Tesla pays out a dividend of nothing. There's just a dash there because Tesla doesn't pay out a dividend, right? Like what we talked about earlier, they're investing all their cash back into their business, 